Wayfair finally opened its first large format store and it comes with a restaurant. According to Chain Store Age, the home furnishings giant has unveiled its first ever large format store at Eden's Plaza in Wilmette, Illinois. It's 150,000 square feet. It's a two-level space designed as a one-stop shopping destination for all things home. The assortment includes furniture, home decor, housewares, appliances, and home improvement products. There are 19 departments in all, and certain items are available to take home on the same day, but most products will be delivered with free shipping to customers within a day or two. And the new Wayfair store also includes a cafe, which I mentioned, called The Porch, which is open all day with a menu that includes small bites, salads, soups, handhelds, and more. I don't know about anchovies. Don't know if they have those there. Um, I hope not, actually. (laughs) Yes. Uh, But Chris, we want to get your thoughts on the store first. Mm. But this is also the A&M put you on the spot question because A&M's very own Chad Lusk recently visited this store right in his Chicago backyard. Chad says, I attended the grand opening of the store and was impressed by the Wayfair's interpretation of brick and mortar to make a digitally native retailer truly omni-channel. Since most retailers don't go in this direction, what would you hope to see or believe it is imperative for Wayfair to do or a similar legacy e-com player to have in its physical store footprint in order to be successful. Mm, mm. Interesting. Interesting that Chad was so positive on it too. That's good to see. I I can't wait to see this store. Um, So to answer that question, I think sure you have all the normal things you have to think about when you're running a store. Like how do you keep it staffed? How do you make sure the operations are running smoothly? But the one thing to me that is the biggest question going in for Wayfair is how will the quality of the merchandising and the displays hold up over time? Yeah. You know, Wayfair makes its bread and butter selling drop ship KD flat pack furniture, which isn't the best for trying to hold up with customers coming in and banging on it every single day. So that's yeah. my big question. I know this too from some firsthand experience because I tried doing this at Target. We had a project called Digital Denver that launched, I think, back in 2016. You can look it up on the Wall Street Journal. We tried the same thing, and this was a very difficult thing. It was very difficult to keep the displays looking good and of a quality that was representative of what you're going to get when it arrives at your home. So, so that's, that's, that is what I'd be most concerned about. And so that, you know, how you ameliorate that is you focus your merchandising on your best stuff. You try to, you try to upsell your best stuff there. You showcase the other stuff to the degree that you can, but you know, at the end of the day, and I'm excited about this, it's been seven years in the waiting. Um, yeah. I love the boldness of it. You know, at the end of the day, I've said it before, home furnishings is a chore the act it's it's in the act of accomplishing that chore getting it done on a on one weekend shouldn't just be the purview of ikea and regional players i think ikea can take a national position on that i've long thought it i doubt it's perfect right now but it's a first step in the right direction so kudos to nerd shaw and his team at wayfair for finally pulling the trigger on it i'm I'm pretty excited i can't wait to go out and see it yeah it's it is i i'm excited to see you we didn't see a lot of the inside of the store i've been scouring online for yeah. like all kinds of pictures and images and to your point for me i think that's what i really want to see in person is what the merchandising looks like because you think about when you're shopping wayfair and especially with like the room generator and how you're able to kind of you know with a digital image change the change your living room into a style whether it's mid-century modern or bohemian or whatever it might be like you're able to do that so seamlessly and i haven't been able to see inside of what the store looks like and how they're kind of like taking their all modern brand or like another brand and really like letting those come to life um so that's something that that i i'm that's like number one on my list the next thing though, I was really happy to see that there weren't any kiosks because when, when right. Fiona Tan, the chief technology yeah, officer at right. Wayfair, and like when people were talking about this store early on, they 100%. were talking about kiosks. And so I think number one, they did a tremendous job just making sure that you're really allowing your customer to use their phone as the remote control as you go mm-hmm. throughout the store, whether that's, you know, the ability to scan product, you can scan the product right there and have somebody packing it for you as you're walking through the store and then pick it up as you're leaving. You can scan the QR code on the product and then have it shipped directly to your house, or you can just pick that that item up. Um, I think those are key elements of truly making this that seamless omni- omni-channel experience that doesn't involve any other technology in the store except for that device that people are walking in with. 
Um, and, and the last thing I think that they are, are, was really imperative to making sure that this was an omni-channel store were the, the digital, uh, shell or the, um, electronic labels that they have throughout oh, the store. Right. So making sure that every single product is updated in real time is comped to the website. That. Like that is, Marked, that is mark one to of, market on the website. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Like That's giving the, this consumer who's yep. used to the way day sales and all the things, knowing that in store, I'm going to get that same price, whether I walk away with it, you know, in my hands or I have it shipped to my house. So I really pleased though, with how this turned out and even more excited to go see it in person. Yeah. You know, the other point that I didn't think about until you just started talking there too, is I think the food actually matters here too. I think, you know, really? Yeah. Way, yeah. Wayfair, a value brand, the food has to be you know, it has to connote value and, and good quality and like, and has to be something that people want. It has to draw attention to it because you're going to spend a lot of time there. It's a big store. So like you want that to work. So you're going to overinvest in that to get the traffic there, to get people to come, to get them to stay, to get them to really immerse themselves in the product. I think that's yeah. an important factor here too. And to probably be a bu and to be a buffer, I think, for time spent. If if because right. it's not the IKEA experience where you're going through the warehouse on the way out and picking up your own product and you're kind of in control of your own destiny, like what you know, as this ramps up, really having somebody picking and packing your orders so that they're ready when you decide you want to check out. I mean, I think that's going to be a logistical challenge too. So making sure that the food is good or that you have something to entertain people if there's a wait. I think yeah. that's a you great got, point. If you got kids, that stuff's important when you're shopping for home mm -hmm. furnishings. It really is. So, you know, and the value, I mean, look at Costco, look at IKEA, yeah. like they've all done it. And, you know, I think Wayfair can do it too.